to take a moment to thank my co-authors, Dr. Kendall Wall, Dr. Dunleavy, and Dr. Wong from USF. And today we're gonna um, discuss some measurements. We do characterization of thermal and trapping time constants in the GAN HIPS. So briefly, the, the outline will be that we'll do a quick review of the GAN HIPS material properties I think people are familiar with. Uh, we'll look at the problem that um, we'll seek to address with these type of measurements and models. Uh, we'll discuss briefly uh, sort of standard pulsed IV methodologies, look at the dispersion characteristics that you can record with uh, such measurements, and then we'll look at these long pulse thermal characterization and trapping uh, characterization measurements and sort of what we can do with those. Well, the GANHEMT is um, always a hot topic, and um, what we can see is because it's got uh, some really great and interesting material properties. High breakdown uh, field leads to high voltages, high power, um, when coupled with silicon carbide uh, substrate, we get very good thermal conductivity as well. And of course it has high mobility and high saturation velocity, which leads to higher currents. So let's, let's talk about what are the main problems and drawbacks that we're still seeing. So in an RF application, as the uh, input power uh, increases, you might start off at a very low bias, uh, such as maybe cl deep class AB, as you would see in A here. And as input power swings, now you, now you start doing this. And what happens is the device is rapidly going through um, lots of changes. And the gate voltage is also swinging. And when we're at this, when we're at this A situation or even further out along the, the actual RF load line, what happens is that uh, we, we can have very large um, electric fields. And um, studies have shown that this, this uh, can lead to detrimental trapping effects. And when we're at the top in the knee region, um, now we have very high currents, and of course this uh, leads to self-heating. And um, it can also lead to gate current, which can also induce uh, different trapping effects. And there's also a middle region where uh, it's a little bit of a mix of both, and we actually come back to this sort of a situation a little bit later on. <coughs> So what does that all mean for uh, realistic looking signals? So here we have a um, realistic baseband signal and uh, this could be found in a communication system. And what we see is that if we have equally powered amplitudes in the baseband signal, depending on when they were in time, you could have different outputs. So the, the Output power, of course, depends not only on the input power, but the gain, the previous response as well. So this, this is all uh, described as memory effects. And with high peak to average power ratios, which are required for good efficiency, uh, we see that we can have some, some big problems. And it can come from thermal, it can come from trapping, and it can, of course, come from a mixture of both of those. So moving on to um, sort of a more classical pulsed IV characterization, characterization, and what can we learn from that? So here uh, we also have a MCAD uh, 3200. This is, uh, I think, the newer edition here. And um, then we've got a uh, thermal chuck and a very compact test bench, which is good. You don't want long cables, or uh, you can you can induce ringing. So this is, this is a simulation of a typical pulse that we might see. Oftentimes, uh, all these measurements that, that would be described as pulsed IV will be sort of, as we heard in the last topic, as close to isothermal as possible, being set by the, the chuck base temperature. And we see a short pulse here, basically described as 500 nanoseconds. It's really um, more realistic because uh, even here, we've got maybe 90 nanoseconds uh, just, just to get up in the pulse. So by the time that you can actually 
catch any sort of meaningful data, I think it's, it's probably 500 nanosecond would be more of a realistic pulse. And then you do this hundreds or thousands of times and you come out with some good looking pulsed IV data. Of course, this can then be used for model development. So in this talk, I'll, I'll go over what we did this, these long pulses. And uh, we ended up using this um, called asynchronous mode. So instead of the previous uh, uh, restriction that you could only pulse for 1.3 milliseconds, now we can pulse up to 200 seconds. Uh, with the only, with a new restriction though, that we have now a semi-log uh, time scale, so we can't quite define, we can't have any sort of um, very fine step if we want. I think in these measurements, the minimum step size I was able to achieve was 1.1 microsecond which can be larger than certain uh, phenomena that we're trying to. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, typical uh, or classical pulse IV characterization um, in a in an environment where we have traps, we see that um, the pulsed IV plane space um, could easily be defined differently depending on which uh, sort of VDSQ you, that you're at, right? So it's, it's because the VDSQ, it's both the VDSQ and the VGSQ, which I don't really show here, but they're setting the trap state and then um, the traps are, are not able to um, emit from those trap state in that short 500 nanosecond period, and you end up with an IV that comes down from, you have the knee walkout down to the blue, down to the pink, right? So this is <coughs> the data that I'm showing here is for a 28 volt part, and, and during RF, it can swing much, much further out than that. So if you're doing a modeling effort, uh, which set of curves do you wanna use? Well, it could be, um, that really depends on your application, I think. It could be all of them. It could be none of these. It could be something in between. So uh, particularly when you're working with statics, which most of the harmonic balance simulations are doing like this, you may just want to pick one set of curves and go with that depending on your application space. But if you need something that's high for a highly modulated application, maybe then you need to start looking at increasing the dynamics of, of the model. So uh, we can also look at transfer characteristics. And um, it's known that there's a drain-inducing barrier lowering effect. Um, but also what happens is that uh, with the trapping effect, it's doing the exact opposite. So here we're just <coughs> sweeping VG at uh, single VDS. And you can see how VDSQ, uh, different VDSQs result in uh, different pinch-off characteristics. Okay, and then finally, uh, a lot of times you'll hear about gate or drain lag as being some sort of percentage of uh, standard pulse. So here we can see um, if you, you pulse with um, zero volt on the gate, zero volt on the drain, you get this highest curve here in the blue. Uh, if, you, if you pulse just looking at gate lag, so you would keep zero VDS on the, <coughs> on the drain, now uh, put VGS at minus five, and now we see that there is some reduction. It's, it's pretty small, less than 1%. And um, finally, for the, the drain, here we're going at minus five to 10 uh, volts on the drain, and we see that there is about 5% there. And so the, <coughs> the rest of the measurements in the presentation are at a five volt drain VDS. So we can imagine that um, in this sense, we we're in a region where it's going to sort of linearly decrease that. So we say the drain lag is maybe two and a half percent. So that will affect the thermal characterization, sort of whether you like it or not, it's, it's there even at very low voltages. Um, so of course, uh, self-heating is, is bad, uh, but it's, it's, we've got to take it into account. And we're all familiar with um, sort of the, the static droop that we can get that's because as the temperature goes up, 
the band gap, the mobility, and even the thermal conductivity of the semiconductors is going down. So there's been uh, many different papers on how to do um, different thermal extractions uh, using pulsed IV or different characterization methods, or you can do some sort of reflectance um, measurements, optical measurements. Um, here, we wanted to see if we could um, pick three points with the same dissipated power, and the, the model would be able to fit those just right. And so, uh, to our best, uh, you know, assumptions, we have to say that there can, there should be minimal trap effect at low VDS condition, and if we're at the same uh, dissipated power, we should be uh, at the same or approximate channel temperature due to the isothermal nature of, of the pulse. So um, here are the conditions, and then we captured this data, and of course, um, on the right, you see the uh, overlay of a VGSQ, VDSQ zero volt pulse, and so exactly how those fit into the uh, pulse IV as a whole. <coughs> and so um, this is actually an ADS data display window and uh, sort of just modeled it in there and you can see how it sort of looks differently on the, the linear and time axis uh, versus a log time axis and uh, here just using a um, three pole uh, standard electrothermal RC model extracted these time constants and then could, could update that. And so all three conditions were fit with the same tau. And then <coughs> just the other parameters that should be different for each condition were modified. And then here was as it was presented in the paper. And I just normalized it so that we could have a close up view and um, see it all on one plot. So this was the model that can be used. And this is um, a sum of. Uh, in this case, stretched exponential. But for the thermal, we can, we can set that equal to one. And so it's just the sum of the, the three exponentials. And then we can translate that directly into the model. And I think that the model's fitting very well. You really can't see it underneath the data. <coughs> so w once you have a better feel about uh, the thermal effects, then you can start looking at trapping and detrapping behavior because these are, uh, most trapping and detrapping is also going to be thermally motivated. So I think classically what we see is that um, it's typical to down pulse to see the detrapping behavior and the trapping behavior can be assumed to be very fast, uh, you know, within what you would be able to realistically measure. Um, so that's, that's typically ignored and so, <coughs> Sure enough, if we, if we pulse down like we're doing here, we're going from 28 volts to 21 volts. And um, sort of mentioned earlier, I have this 1.1 microsecond minimum um, uh, amount of time before I can get a data point here. But then we do see that it has this uh, log shape that, that, can, that can be modeled with the, um, the behavioral model shown, shown before. And of course, on, on linear scale, it doesn't uh, look too impressive there. It just, but but when you get to this log scale, then you can see that the uh, the dynamics. So we explored a little bit and measured from from different locations, pulsing to different locations. And so so in this uh, presentation, I'm showing you what happened when we pulsed up. So <coughs> we went from a region uh, that sort of assumed to be a low trap state. It's a very low voltage. Again, this is a 28 volt part. So we're, we're here at five volts. And what we did was we modified the um, duty cycle from 100 seconds to 10 seconds to one second. But we kept the pulse width the same. So it spends the same amount of time in the measured point, but the amount of time it spends in the Q point is much different. And to do our best to mitigate the effects of any self-heating, we said, okay, well, we'll need to try to keep it isothermal in that if we compare these two points um, on a pulse-type plane space like this, where um, 
we were at the short pulse 500 nanoseconds, we were at approximately 1.4 watts in each instance. Okay, and so what we saw was actually uh, sort of interesting, I think, and um, we were able to discern a clear a distinction uh, for each one of these measurements um, by duty cycle. And we also discovered what we believe to be some very long-term trapping con time constants as well. So I think that there's a very fast trapping time constant that could be tens of nanoseconds, but also um, some that, that last to possibly a uh, large amount, uh, maybe 100 microseconds, and possibly milliseconds, depending on the region that you can be in. And of course, detrapping uh, always takes a long time, um, but also we found that these two trapping and detrapping and thermal con time constants were all overlapping each other in certain regions. But in general, of course, the trapping time constants very fast, detrapping time constants very slow. And we believe that the, the uh, impact of the duty cycle we see here is simply because it's spending more time in that trap inducing state which was actually at a lower VDS, and then this higher VDS is, um, did promote some trapping, but it was a different type of trapping. So um, I think that, again, there can be more work, but this could possibly be used as a exploratory methodology for evaluating uh, different trap regions and possibly the uh, <coughs> possibly with more work be able to tell exactly why uh, the trapping is happening in different regions. So um, what, what we've shown here was that a moderate pulse IV system can characterize all these different tows ranging from very quick to much, much longer on the scale of milliseconds. So uh, low microseconds to milliseconds. Um, we show that you want to limit the effect of self-heating on trapping and detrapping, but also vice versa. Uh, we show that these tiles fall into low frequency components of uh, standard communication time scales, and that the overlapping tiles are, are problematic in that sense, that they will interfere with each other. Uh, so um, my follow-up work uh, would be to continue to explore the thermal dependence of the trapping, detrapping time constants, also looking at um, how that exploratory method could be used in, in trapping and detrapping and see um, how that impacts modern communication systems, as well as going to highly asynchronous uh, models that could be implemented in circuit simulations with Verilog ACO. So with that, I'd like to thank you all, and um, I wonder if you have any questions. Okay, so, so in the model, uh, sorry, in the um, simulation, uh, this is, these pulse are, are also simulated. So I try and uh, give sort of a, a realistic pulse shape, uh, even within the simulation. Okay, 